Hello, welcome back. I am actually so excited to see you back here tonight. How was your day? It's Monday, but guess what? It felt like Sunday to me. I had some people visiting my house today and I was just thinking, it's been almost maybe 10 weeks, perhaps for some of you 12 weeks since we've been in quarantine and just staying at home and going out just when it's really necessary. And that's a good thing because we're all in that mission of fighting COVID-19. But I'm just wondering what were the effects of that in everyone's lives? Because I don't know what kind of person are you, but a lot of people are people person type of uh, uh, personal style, and they like to be in touch with their friends. And I'm actually a natural astro extrovert, but I guess because I was um, facing my early months of pregnancy, I was actually happy to be in the house by myself. However, when I saw my friends today, I noticed, wow, it makes a difference to have your friends in person around. So my day was a happy day. How was your day? And I'm actually very excited today because we're going to be bringing some good friends that are going to be sharing of their whole person health experience. Welcome back to our health week. And I'm hoping that tonight you're going to be blessed with some very important information and great inspirational stories. Our first guest for the night is Lorena Berrios. She's a young Hi, I'm Lorena. I just wanted to share with you that by doing the Live Mod project really helped me to get more tools and to use them in a really easy and simple way to actually know how to improve my life and get to be happier. Uh, some, some just simple things that you tend to forget, like go out into nature, um, be able to share nice words or nice feelings with the rest of the people. Uh, some simple things, but we just forget that are the main things in life. And just now, having all that information back into me, just make everything easier. And also feels really good when you're able to share that knowledge with more people. So now, being in this um, group of moms that we have been doing the project uh, for a few weeks now, it just feels even better because you're doing good things, good act um, in a community. And I will definitely recommend Live More Project to anyone who could be feeling a little bit with anxiety, depression, or just anyone who is open to have a better life. Um, this is up to you. If you want to have some positive knowledge, uh, known to men inside of you, and easy tools just to fix your day and your, in a long term way, this is uh, for you and for everyone. In my case, for example, one of the one of the information that we'll share in the project is that your happiness or your mood actually it will interfere in three generations. So, for example, in this case, if I decide to be happy, then my daughter will be happier than my daughter's friend, and then the friends of the friends, let's say. Um, so, if you can create that kind of impact. Um, yeah, that's definitely what you want in life. Thank you so much, Lorena. We're very happy for your experience and you're already empowering other women and your friends to join the Live More Project. Tonight, you're going to learn how to join a Live More Project group so that you can embark on this wellness journey yourself. I want to introduce a great friend of mine, Renee Livingston. She's a naturopath and also a massage therapist with over 10 years of clinical experience and a Bachelor of Health Science. She has worked in health retreat settings and private clinical practice. Renee places a strong emphasis on lifestyle strategies, nutritional solutions, and patient education. Her areas of interest include gut health, women's health, and detoxification. Renee lives in Newcastle with her husband and two young children. And I want to welcome my friend Renee to tell us today a little bit about some natural remedies that it's often forgotten. 
sleep and nature. Hi, I'm Renee. I'm a naturopath, a wife and a mother of two kids and an all-round nature lover. Now you might be wondering why on earth I'm standing in a paddock in the middle of nowhere. Well, you're about to find out because it's Health Week this week and I'm going to talk to you about two of my most favourite subjects, that is sleep and benefits of nature. Now I love being out in nature, I love gardening, I love exercising outdoors, I just love being in the sun, being at the beach, anything I can do out in nature, I'm going to try and do. Um, and I hope you enjoy nature too because we were designed for nature. Now, back in the beginning, God created us in the Garden of Eden. We were surrounded by nature. That was our home and our playground. And we really need to utilize nature like this today. There's multiple health benefits on our bodies from um, sleep improvement to immune benefits to emotional benefits. So we're gonna talk about a few of those right now. Um, so first of all, the sun's still up. It's starting to set now, but the sun has many benefits to our body. Obviously, if there was no sun, everything would be freezing cold and we would cease to exist because plants couldn't grow, um, we would have no food to eat, there'd be a whole range of implications from that. So the sun is extremely important. It occasionally gets a really bad rap and some people are quite scared of it, but it is something that is vital to us and we need to enjoy the sun safely. So we're going to talk about a few of its benefits. Um, first of all, as far as uh, ultraviolet radiation goes, has many benefits on our cardiovascular system and on our immune cells. So being exposed to sunlight will help increase the production of a chemical called nitric oxide. Nitric oxide will help increase uh, feelings of good mood as well as helping improve our circulatory system. So the nitric oxide is produced from the UVA radiation that we get from sunlight uh, and I don't know about you, but if it's a beautiful sunny day and I wake up, I look outside, I straight away feel good. So they'd say that on sunny days, people feel a whole lot better. There's an increased production of serotonin and your endorphins and you just feel ready to get up and go on a sunny day as opposed to a rainy day where you just want to tuck back in under your doona and go to sleep. So sunlight will definitely have beneficial effects on our emotions. It also helps to decrease feelings of anger and irritation and increase those good mood feelings of happiness and contentedness and um, a reduced stress kind of a feeling. So sunlight is extremely good for your mood. So if you're having a little bit of a flat day, feeling a bit down, been sitting in front of the computer too long, get outside and see what kind of benefits you can experience to your mood. Now, not only does sunlight affect our moods, but it also helps with the production of a fat soluble vitamin called vitamin D. Now this is likely no news flash to anybody. We've been hearing about vitamin D for a long time. Vitamin D is very important for the health and strength of our bones, um, as well as our general immune health as well. Particularly people suffering with autoimmune conditions, they're really gonna benefit from vitamin D and getting out in the sunlight. Now everyone's got their own individual um, quota of sunlight required for the day. So if you're white like me, you, you don't need to get so much sun because you have less of a natural God-given sunscreen in your skin called melanin. Those with a darker skin, they have an increased concentration of melanin and they're gonna require um, more sunlight exposure. So obviously in the different seasons, your sunlight exposure um, time requirements are going to vary. Generally for a white Caucasian in summer, it's about a 20 minute exposure to sunlight on bare skin and in winter, it gets up to about one hour. Now for those with a darker skin pigmentation in winter, it's gonna be reaching up closer to about three hours. So um, for those of you from Pacific Islands or Africa, um, just do a little quiz for yourself and see are you spending about three hours in the sun over these winter months. So it's really important to help keep your vitamin D levels up. Now the sunlight's also going to be having multiple beneficial effects on our cardiovascular system. So having the sunlight exposure to our skin, it makes you kind of feel warm, it dilates those little capillaries so it helps with circulation all the way to our uh, extremities. It also helps to decrease our blood pressure and it'll often reduce your overall resting heart rate as well. So there's many other benefits to being outdoors and in nature. Now I don't know if you can hear the birds but there's a heap of lorikeets all and flying around and buzzing around in all these trees. Now just hearing sounds of nature is very beneficial to us as well. It'll help reduce 
cortisol and other stress hormones that are produced in our body. There's also different smells that we can smell in nature and your olfactory stimulation is very powerful. Now, I don't know if you've ever smelled a smell that's just taken you back to a childhood memory when you were a kid. Um, it's got a powerful effect on recalling memories and helping our brain function. So being outdoors, you have got an array of different smells from flowers. My, one of my all-time favorites is hay or freshly mown lawn. Mm -mm, give me some of that any day. Um, so I'm sure you've all got your favorite smells. Some people love roses and other different flowers. So having that olfactory stimulation outside is really great for brain health development, memory recall, all those kinds of things. And when we're outdoors too, there is a greater production of negative ions. Now negative ions initially sounds like a bad thing, but it is actually a really important thing. It's kind of like the antioxidants of nature that are in the air. So it actually helps um, reduce inflammation, helps to reduce stress levels. Um, when you're around areas where there's running water, so whether it be at the beach or near a waterfall, there's gonna be greater production of these negative ions. And they're gonna be really helpful for our body. Now the Japanese, they're a fantastic group of people that have got a wonderful ritual called forest bathing. And I'm not going to attempt the Japanese word because I'm sure I say it wrong all the time. Um, but they actually have this um, technique in forest bathing where they just go outdoors and expose themselves to nature and its beneficial effects on, it, on your body. Now there's been many studies done on forest bathing and it does help to really boost that innate part of our immune system and helps to increase um, different immune markers such as your natural killer cells that help find um, invaders, pathogens and destroy them, viruses. So it's a really great thing to help get your natural killer cell production up and you can do that by just taking a walk around in your garden. If you live in an urban area, you're indoors a lot of the time, maybe you're in an apartment, you don't have so much uh, access to different green spaces, you can do some simple things in and around your home to help increase your exposure to uh, green spaces and negative ions. Now, one great way to do that is by getting some indoor plants. So if you're stuck in an office, you can get yourself some beautiful succulents or some ferns or some palms or something like that that can be in your office space that can help give you those benefits of being outdoors. Now, it's not quite the same, but hey, some is better than none. So go and buy yourself some indoor plants um, the other thing you can do if your mobility is not so good, you can go out onto your balcony or a deck, um, you know, roll your pants legs up, get some sun exposure to your lower limbs and sit and have a little bit of a sunbathing session. Just having a window open as well, letting fresh air come in, breathing that fresh air is going to be really beneficial for your energy levels as well as your um, mood and emotions. So yeah, definitely try and do those kinds of things. The three big things that I want you to remember about nature is that it's going to give you your vitamin D production. It's gonna to help to boost your immune system and actually stabilize it, so not make it overactive. People that have autoimmune diseases where their immune system is overactive and attacking themselves, they're really gonna benefit from the sunlight exposure because it helps to balance that out, um, optimizing your immune system. Um, and the other point to remember is that it has beneficial effects on our mood and cardiovascular system. Actually, that's really four, isn't it? So <laughs> vitamin D, um, immune health, mood and emotions, as well as your cardiovascular system. So get outdoors and enjoy nature as much as you can. Now, just as the sun is starting to set here, these cycles of day and night are very much interrelated. Now, our outdoor exposure in the day and our exposure to sunlight through our retina is actually going to help with the production of a certain hormone called melatonin. Now, melatonin is your uh, sleep, rest and rejuvenate hormone, and it's very closely linked to serotonin. So in the daytime, when our retina is exposed to sunlight, uh, our body is going to be producing serotonin, which is that happy, feel good, energetic kind of hormone. Now, when the sun starts to set and our retinas are now exposed to less light, our serotonin production starts to dip and our melatonin production starts to peak. So the serotonin is actually converted to melatonin. 
Um, so if you can be watching the sunrise in the morning and watching the sunset, that's actually a really good way to get your body into a really nice, healthy rhythm. If you're finding that, you know, your meals are all over the place, you know, your bowels aren't regular, um, you're feeling just a bit disjointed, that's a really nice cycle to get yourself into. Watch the sunrise, watch the sunset. God is trying to naturally reduce our exposure to light once the sun sets. Had we not had artificial light and electricity and all these kinds of things, um, we would be experiencing a lot more darkness than we currently are. So due to mod cons and technology, we get to sit in front of a computer screen, watch TV, be on a laptop, whatever it might be, till all hours of the night. We can have the light on and do an all-nighter if we're studying if we want to. But what kind of impact is this having on our health? And I can assure you, it's not a good one. So it's thought that about a third of all Australians don't get adequate sleep. So it's either insufficient or interrupted. Now, as a young mum, I know all about interrupted sleep and it's a fairly common thing. And there's definitely phases of life where you're going to have a more interrupted sleep. But we do need to try and really increase our sleep time, even if the quality is affected, or try and improve our quality if we're getting adequate sleep time. Now, adequate sleep time is about seven to nine hours for adults over 18. Children have slightly different um, sleep requirements, but sleep is essential for life. Um, if we are inhibited from sleeping for a period of time, it can actually cause death. So I don't know if you've ever been sleep deprived before, you start losing concentration, often your vocabulary and your verbal skills start to diminish, your memory recall is terrible, then you start to become irritable, irritated, your body is trying to make you fall asleep and it's a real battle to try and stay awake when you're tired. And that's because if we force ourselves to remain awake, you will actually get to a point where you have hallucinations, you have convulsions and you die. So it's extremely important to get sleep and that's why it's hard to fight sleep when your body wants to sleep. Um, so a lot of Australians do suffer with sleep apnea, others have restless leg syndrome, others have issues with um, their bladder needing to wake up and urinate frequently in the night. So there's a whole range of reasons why your sleep can be disrupted. So we need to look at us and see what is creating the issue with our sleep and try and rectify that. So go and find the cause. You can sniff lavender all you want, but if you're waking up all the time to go to the toilet because you've got an enlarged prostate, I'm sorry, but lavender is not going to help you out a great deal. So we need to really look at what the cause is. Is it the dog barking all night? Is it the, you know, the ticking clock that is affecting us? So we need to look at, okay, what is affecting my sleep and try and mitigate those things first. So it might be, you know, putting the dog in the laundry or getting a bark collar or getting rid of that clock and getting a new one. Um, but just a few basic sleep habits um, that we, or sleep hygiene habits that we can all utilize is when the sun sets, start reducing your light exposure. So don't have all the lights on in your house, put on some of your um, bedside lamps or keep the lighting low so that your body can really start increasing the production of melatonin. Um, we want to reduce our screen exposure as well so the recommended time is at least two hours before bed. You really want to avoid screens. So if you still want to have some kind of input you can listen to an audio book or you can um, listen to music or you can actually read a actual book with pages and this isn't going to be affecting the production of your melatonin. Now obviously in the evening too you don't want to be doing anything super exciting or you know getting your heart pumping or getting you thinking and daydreaming so much so that your mind becomes so active that you can't actually relax off to sleep. So generally a good rule of thumb is also two hours before bed don't do any like major planning or sit down and start organizing your work for the next day like get that all done beforehand. We also want to start reducing our intake of liquids as well so generally by about 6 p.m. it's good to just reduce uh, intake of liquids so that you're not having huge cups before going to bed because obviously you're going to be waking up to use the toilet. Um, so there are some really big things that you can do. Um, also using a little bit of hydrotherapy as well to help get yourself off to sleep can be really effective as well especially if your brain is quite active and you can't shut it off. Um, you can try some things like some deep breathing exercises or do some light stretching that might help 
But the hydrotherapy technique that's really um, beneficial is a hot foot bath. So essentially we're manipulating our circulation here. If we put our feet in a tub of water, you want the level just to be slightly above the ankle bone. And we want to immerse our feet in quite warm water. So it should be about between 39 and 41 degrees Celsius. Have a little thermometer there to check the water temperature so that you, you don't burn yourself. And by popping our feet in that warm water, it actually dilates the blood vessels in our feet and draws the blood down to our feet so that it's um, taking it away from the head and it makes you quite sleepy fairly quickly. So it's about a 20 minute kind of treatment where you'd sit with your feet in a tub of hot water. You can also put a few drops of lavender essential oil or some other kind of relaxing herb or oil into the water um, and you'll find that after a little while you are feeling quite sleepy. Now after your 20 minutes or when the water starts to really cool down you want to have a jug of cold water nearby and you just want to pour that jug of cold water over your feet towel them off really quickly, put some warm socks on and ideally jump straight into bed and you'll get the benefits there on your sleep as well. So um, as I mentioned, you can use lavender essential oil. There are a few other really nice calming herbs that you can utilize as essential oils, either in a diffuser, you can put a few drops on your pillow. You might also want to use some, some of the herbs in teas. So you've probably all heard of chamomile tea. You can get passion flower is another really nice one for the evenings. They've got a range of different sleepy time or calming blends uh, of teas that you can use in the evening. Just check out your local health food store or even your supermarkets carry a lot of them these days. And um, by having a cup of those, not too many cups, because obviously we don't want to be up at night going to the toilet. But if you're having a cup of those, say it, 7 or 8 p.m. you should be all right with just one cup and it's going to help with its sedative effects on your body. The other very simple thing to do to improve your sleep at night is not having dinner too late. We want to actually help our body's digestive processes shut down so that the processes that are upregulated overnight can do what they need to do. So try and have your dinner as early as you can, ideally around 5, 5.30, 6 p.m. Um, you don't want to be consuming too much food later than that. And that will give your body enough time to process the food that you've just placed in your stomach so that then when it's time to go to bed, you can go to sleep and other functions to do with memory, immunity, they can all be upregulated um, during your sleep. Another really interesting discovery that's been made in more recent times is the process of your brain actually detoxing itself um, and actually removing different substances that have built up throughout the day. Now we've all heard of our lymphatic system that does that for the rest of our body, um, but then your brain has a separate system that they've actually termed the glymphatic system. So it does sound a little bit like lymphatic, but it's glymphatic. So this glymphatic system is upregulated only when we fall asleep. So you need to get adequate sleep at night so that your brain can actually detoxify and process the buildup of these toxins that have occurred within the day. So if you want your brain to be sharp, healthy the next day, you wanna make sure you're getting adequate sleep. Sometimes we feel that, say for example, if we're at uni or got some big exams coming up at school, we might wanna be doing an all-nighter and trying to cram information into our brain and skimping on our sleep. But you're actually gonna be better off to actually put textbooks aside and go to sleep because by sleeping, you're actually helping your brain retain the things that it has learnt through the day and it actually embeds it into your memory, your more long-term memory, as opposed to just um, you know, learning it in the day and then not being able to recall it later. So you embed them into your memory and you help with the recall of those things. So you might be surprised if you put your textbooks aside, go and sleep, what you'll remember in the morning of what you studied or learned at school or uni the day before. So the other thing that's really upregulated while we sleep is our immune system. So our immune system's working pretty hard at night and um, the cytokines, which are one of our um, immune markers, will really be increased overnight. And this helps with scavenging different um, pathogens that have come into our body throughout the day. So if you wanna have a good, strong immune system, you wanna make sure you're getting adequate sleep at night. These cytokines are generally at their peak between about 10 p.m. and 1 or 2 a.m. So that's a really important sleep block that we need there. With our melatonin, that's really peaking 
um, at around midnight, one o'clock, but it's gonna start really increasing its production at around 9 p.m. So a really great sleep time to aim for would be about 9.30. If you can get to bed between nine and 9.30, um, if you're over 18, that's really going to help your body's production of melatonin. Um, and I should talk about the benefits of melatonin, actually. Melatonin, as it's that um, rest and rejuvenate hormone that I spoke about, this one really is a fantastic antioxidant. It's um, implicated as an anti-aging hormone. Um, you often see people trying to add melatonin into different face creams and all sorts of things as a like beauty type product. So melatonin is really good to help you looking young and feeling well as well. So we want to make sure we're getting adequate production at night. So melatonin is that anti-aging um, hormone. It's also going to be a, just a very good antioxidant overall in our body and helps with uh, a variety of different, different organ systems, particularly our cardiovascular system. So melatonin actually helps to increase our feelings of pleasure. So by getting adequate sleep, you'll wake up and have a much better day than if you didn't sleep so well. It actually does help to reduce our um, cholesterol and our blood pressure as well. So if you're inching up there with your cholesterol and your blood pressure is going up, perhaps just try something as simple as getting enough sleep. Melatonin helps to reduce our risk of osteoporosis and helps with a whole range of different immune functions. Um, and particular, particular studies have looked at the effects of melatonin and uh, its effects on tumour formation. If you've got a family history or a risk of cancer in your family, it's really important that you're getting adequate sleep so that you can help to really boost your immune system and help your body fight any production of tumour cells. So yeah, melatonin is one of those really super powerful hormones that we want to make sure we're having adequate production of. All right, there's different kinds of rest that we do need. We do need that nightly rest. We need a weekly rest. We need recreational rest as well. So that's where nature comes in again. It's good to really get that rest time out in nature as well as the rest time at night. And obviously we need the exposure to the sunlight during the day so that we can have our melatonin production at night. So they really are closely related and it's nice to have a good balance of both. So yeah, the big take home messages to remember are get outdoors, spend some time in the sunshine every day. Um, make sure you are starting to turn off lights and get away from screens and things like that as the evening progresses. So keep your lights dim once the sun sets and then at about two hours before bed, you wanna get rid of any screens and TV and things like that that you're working on and just start to really calm everything down, reduce your fluid intake and make sure you're having your dinner early enough so that your body's not active digesting food overnight. So your body will definitely thank you for it. Your immune system, your mood will be much improved so your family will thank you and your friends will thank you for that. Um, your body will be physically healthier as well from the benefits that you get from nature and sleep. And you know what? It actually just feels really good. I love to sleep and I love to be outdoors. So get enjoying those things. It's extremely good for your health. So all the best in health and wholeness. Hope to see you again. Thank you so much, Renee. I honestly, just watching this video, I got revived already. Isn't it funny? It's so simple, sleep and nature. Simple things, it's almost too good to be true, but it is true. I actually felt, and I shared with you yesterday, that just spending some time outside, walking and seeing the blues and the greens and all around nature, it brings that relaxation that it helps us not to sleep better, but it lifts our mood. So guess what? Who did the snapshot yesterday? If you haven't, yesterday we announced that you're getting a free personal wellness snapshot and it will tell you an index. It's going to tell you where you need to improve and where you're doing well. And I remember well that we did, we told you yesterday that you're gonna get a free book. Dr. Darren Morton yesterday, he mentioned about how not to diet book by Dr. Michael Greger. And this book is one of his newest books and it tells you the strategies why you should not have to worry about a diet. It is a really interesting book and I am actually halfway done with it and it's super, I mean, I'm learning something every day. So if you want to learn more about how not to diet, you can actually win this book for free tonight even. And this is what you're gonna have to do. At the end of the talk today, tonight, you're going to have a code 
or just going straight into the link to get your wellness snapshot done if you haven't done it yet. The first person that goes into our Facebook health and wellness group and post where, what is the dimension of wellness that you're doing best based on your wellness snapshot wins the book. So it's the first post and it's starting right after this talk and you're going to be way able to win this book. Now, even though we're only giving one book away, you don't need to be sad. Because like I said, this week, it's health week. It's all about your whole person health journey. So you're going to be able to actually apply and get other things for free, even if you miss out on the book. And that's because we're going to start running a Live More project group next week. And all of you are invited to participate. It's completely free. Usually, it would cost $75 per person. But like I said to you, this has been sponsored by the South Pacific Division, and so you will be able to do it for free entirely. So again, at the end of our program today, and tomorrow, you don't wanna miss out, you wanna find out how you're going to participate on this group for Live More Project. Not only that, but if you come tomorrow, you're going to learn other strategies on how to deal with stress. And not only with stress, but how to emotionally thrive in this environment today. See, many of us, including myself, we've been spending a lot of time in the house. And perhaps there are ways that we could just lift our moods, but there are strategies that we can learn from professionals on how we can prevent anxiety and depression. You might be thinking to yourself, oh, that's not my problem. But statistics and research says that this has been the major pandemic of the world today, which means that we have over the half of the population of the world that is currently suffering from anxiety and depression. So I'm sure that if, even if it doesn't apply to you, you may know somebody else who could benefit. Invite them to come tomorrow. We're going to have Dr. Horacio with us and he's going to be sharing a lot of his strategies on how can you prevent anxiety and depression and how you can thrive emotionally in our environment today. I hope that you got a lot of from the session tonight. We are hoping to bring you real people, real stories that can share what they have experienced in their whole person health journey. And they can share with you strategies that you can start doing today so that you can start seeing the results as well. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great night.